Hey, let us talk about history again. This time, of Pericles and the Golden Age of Athens. One night, around 495 BC, a green woman in Athens named Agarista suddenly woke up, shook by a vivid dream. Historians like Herodotus and Plutarch tell us in this dream foretold great things to come. In a dream, Agarista screamed in pain while giving birth. But after the agony passed, she looked up to see what the midwife held. Not a human baby, but a lion. This was the beginning of the story of Pericles. Pericles, son of Agarista, became one of the greatest leaders of Athens' golden age. His story is about the virtue of benevolence. Pericles was born into Athenian nobility. His mother came from one of Athens' great noble families, the Alcmaeonidae, and his father was a military hero and politician. From his birth, he seemed destined for greatness, not just because of his lineage, but because of his character and the unusual omen that accompanied his birth. Everything pointed to a remarkable life. However, what's truly unique about Pericles is how he used the circumstances. Many boys in his position might have grown up feeling entitled, seeking power, wealth and glory. He did become the lion his mother dreamed of, but he showed greatness without the savagery. To truly understand his unique personality, it helps to compare him with his rival, Cimon. Cimon was admired as a strong leader. He became the admiral of the Athenian navy after fighting bravely at the Battle of Salamis. He declared the Mediterranean of pirates, securing trade for Athens and bringing back wealth. To Cydides, the historian, Believe Cimon won favor by impressing the aristocratic class with his might and lavish gifts. Pericles, however, won the affection of the Athenians in a different, nobler way. With his family's connections and high status, he had significant social influence in Athens. Unlike other leaders focused on personal gain, his leadership was marked by kindness and wisdom. For example, before Pericles gained authority, Crimes and offense were often judged by a single person, leading to unfair trials. Although it didn't immediately benefit his position, he used his influence to change this. He insisted that all criminals be judged by a jury of their peers. Similarly, in those days, Athenian soldiers were expected to fight without pay, motivated only by patriotism or the charisma of leaders like Cimon. Pericles understanding the burden on the common man, pushed for laws that required Athens to pay its soldiers, even though this policy was costly to the wealthy. He believed, also, in the arts and their benefits for everyone. He wanted the theatre to be accessible to all, not just the rich. So, he made it a law that the city provide opportunities for the poor to attend the theatre of the Arsos. And this opened the door to arts education for all Athenians, not just the elite. Though, through these acts, he gained the thrust and enduring support of his people, even more than the war hero Cimon. This period of Athenian society, when he part in honor was built, is known as the Golden Age of Pericles. But it was during the darkest times that his character truly shone. Near the end of his reign, Athens' rival, Sparta, grew jealous of its wealth and power. This tension led to the Peloponnesian War, a conflict that would last 27 years. When Sparta attacked Athens with a mass of force, Paragus urged his people to retreat behind the city's walls. Athens could rely on its long walls, which stretched on the city to its port, Piraeus, to maintain its supply chain. His strategy worked. The Spartans were halted. But soon, a terrible plague struck the crown of the city. The conditions were so dire that even the Spartan army retreated for fear of catching the disease. Despite the risk to his own life, he continued his duties, walking among the sick and weak, encouraging his people to endure. And though many close to him died, he remained strong until his favorite son burst away. It was only then that he showed sorrow. 
laying a funeral wreath on his son's lifeless body. Veracruz himself eventually called to Blake. As he lay on his deathbed, his followers praised him for the prosperity of things he enjoyed and his leadership. Responded by saying, "What do you praise in my life? It's been due to fortune. I deserve no credit for it. What I am proudest of is that no Athenian ever wore mourning because of anything done by me." His story illustrates the virtue of benevolence. A rare quality in leadership, as Saint Augustine once said, the work of virtue is the good use of those things which we are capable of using wrongly. Power and wealth are often misused by evil men, but during the age of Pericles, Greece had a leader who used his gifts for good. But most of us will never lead a nation. We all have something to give. We each have one chance to use our words, talents, and resources wisely at some point. Heracles' life is remarkable. It is an example of benevolence. He is a pastor's wife of Chemon, but generally seeking the good of his people, making him one of the greatest politicians Athens ever had.